second wave. And they say there are a lot of reasons states don't make this information readily available, and there is no clearinghouse of data at high levels. Oh, they said the federal government could tell you how many whites were busted for counterfeiting in any given year. They can tell you how many this, how many that, but they will not show you how many illegal immigrants have committed crimes in this country. According to the latest study, 55,000 illegal aliens are in federal prison and 296,000 in state and local lockups in 2011. Now, you know they've gone up since then, right? In 2014, ICE removed 315,000 criminal illegal immigrants nationwide. 85% of whom had previously been convicted of a criminal offense. But that same year, ICE released onto U.S. streets another 30,558 criminal illegal immigrants with a combined 79,000 criminal convictions, including, hold on to your hats, sanctuary city liberals, 86 homicides, 186 kidnappings, thousands of sexual assaults. They specialize in that. Domestic violence rampant in the community and DUIs rampant in the community. So this is a story that's becoming prominent now only because of Donald Trump. And it's resonating even with moderates, even with Democrats. I have an 8,000 word chapter on this type of data in my own way in Government Zero. No borders, no language, no culture. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. It is the Savage Nation going strong at hour number three. No one could believe it. They said I wouldn't last a day in radio. Well, now it's 21 years later. 250 stations later, I rose like a phoenix from the ashes to be with you tonight. And I wish the debates were on right now, but they're not. So we're doing the second or next best thing, which is asking you what you would ask Hillary Clinton if she would debate anybody. Now, isn't it ironic that all of a sudden they're asking uh, fallen celebrities, unknown porn stars, I don't know who, what they would ask the Republicans tonight. It's stupid things that CNN does. But no one's asking, what would you ask Hillary Clinton? It's astounding. So I'm asking you what you would ask her. Then I've asked you, what is Trump's appeal? Why are independents supporting him? Why are even liberal Democrats supporting him? Women love him. By the way, women are, are, are swooning over him. That, that's a terrible thing to say, but it's true. You know, it's sort of a stereotype that women swoon. Well, they do. Women tend to relate to people in some, time, in some ways more emotionally than men do. That's a reality. You don't like it too bad. Go to UC Berkeley. If you don't like what I'm saying, go enroll in UC Santa Cruz. If you don't like what I'm saying, go uh, call up Janet Napolitano. Because I realize you're being offended. And maybe you can sue me under a federal civil rights act for, for making you feel uncomfortable. But what is, about, what is it about Trump? Why, women, why do you like Donald Trump? Can't be his hair. It's his guts. It's his guts, the willingness to stand up to the left-wing vermin. It's his guts, the willingness to stand up to the China lobbyists. It's his guts, his willingness to stand up to the illegal immigration mafia. It's his guts, willing to say things that put him at great risk. It's his guts to say the things that Americans are actually saying. That's what's going on. I wouldn't advise him to be there tonight because they're going to let it. Remember what they did last time? how they set the stage up where the camera was on the left and they put him where you could hardly see him. Wait till you see what they do tonight. And wait till you see what Jake uh, the Woodpecker does and the unknown talk show host, the wannabe who no one ever heard of. What are you most least looking forward to in tonight's debate? Are you going to actually watch it? They're going to be very careful because they're going to. everyone's going to expect a Megyn Kelly. And I'm sure if she could do it, Martha Washington would appear tonight on a um, competing network just to see if she could do it again and get the great ratings that she got before. I don't know what they're liable to do tonight. What are they going to ask him? Why do you hate immigrants? Oh, would you really build a wall, Mr. President? Come on, stupid questions. The people want the wall. The people want the illegal invasion stopped. The people don't want 100,000 Muslim refugees brought in from Syria. The people want China to stop screwing us. The people want tariffs against Chinese goods until they revalue their currency. 
I, I can give you a total lit, litany of what the people really want. It's what I do. It's my stock and trade. I have a fairly good uh, idea of what you want. So let's go to the callers on what would you ask Hillary if she dare come out from behind Debbie Wasserman Schultz's uh, uh, shadow. WDRC Radio. Bill, welcome to the program. What would you ask Hillary if she'd stop hiding? If I could ask Hillary something, I would ask her uh, what her feelings are about the deal that uh, President Obama has with Iran. And if it's consummated, uh, what would she do if, God forbid, she is elected president and how she would answer? Well, it's a, there's a simple answer. She'd give you the smile and she'd say why this is the greatest deal ever. It stops Iran from developing a nuclear weapon and it's going to save the world from going to war. So you know the answer. It's a party line answer. It's a complete lie. I understand that, but the American people are, are very much opposed to this. And if the American people here... Well, the American people is not as smart as her. The American people are not as smart as Barack Obama. You know that. They're smarter than everybody else. That's how they became... That's, how, could he, how could you not see that Obama's smarter than everybody if a man of his low caliber became president? How could you not see that? How could a man with such no qualifications become president twice? Because he's smarter than the rest of us. He knows how to game the system. He did to the presidential election... What San Francisco politics did for the guy who allegedly beat his girlfriend. Bill, stay on the line. I'll send you a free copy of Government Zero. The minute's out. I hear they're coming in this week. Right now, they're only on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. I cannot wait to get my hands on a copy. What would you ask Hillary Clinton? Bill asked, what would, he ask, what would uh, she do about the Iran deal? Let's go to KSFO, right here in the home of... Uh, San Fran Sicko. Mike on KSFO, what's on your mind? What's your question? No, it was a comment basically about Trump. What, what people like, I think, is they just look at somebody like Trump and he's, he seems honest. Like these other guys, these other candidates, they just seem like, I don't know, like sneaky, like they're hiding something. Like they, they, <laughs> they, they, <laughs> And we haven't heard the word sneaky since Nixon disappeared from the scene. Trump? Would you say Hillary, would you say Hillary Clinton is evasive? They just see. I mean, they're beholden to their their. Dumb. Do you think Obama looks sneaky, Mike? I, can you hear me? Do you think Obama looks sneaky? I don't want to even comment about that. But what I'm saying about what? Trump, he just. Wait, 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 wait. Why would you want to comment on that? I mean, honestly, I think he's a punishment to this country. If you ask me. Okay. Well, that's well put. Very classy. Stay in the line. Government zero goes out to you. No borders, no language, no culture, and what you can do about it. Yeah, he has been a punishment. He has been a direct punishment. You should hear the speech he gave today, attacking the Republican debaters tonight. After he says that presidential politics shouldn't be so negative. After saying that presidential politics shouldn't be so dark. After saying that presidential politics uh, shouldn't be so partisan. Huh. Illegitimate non carborundum. I don't know my Latin because I didn't go to Catholic school, but I know some Latin because I went to botanical school. This is the Savage Nation. In the echo chamber uh, that is uh, presidential politics, everything is dark and everything is terrible. Uh, they don't seem to offer many solutions for the disasters that they perceive, but they're uh, quick to tell you who to blame. Uh, I'm here to say that there's nothing uh, particularly uh, patriotic or American about talking down America, especially when we stand as one of the few sources of economic strength in the world. <laughs> Despite the perennial doom and gloom that I guess is uh, inevitably part of a presidential campaign, mm -hmm. America's winning right now. America's great right now. Really? We can do even better. We're losing but against ISIS. We're losing against China. We're losing against Mexico. You know, I read that Nazi soldiers were high on meth during invasions. You say, what are you jumping to that for? I'm just thinking uh, out loud. I read that, that uh, yeah, there's a study came out that Nazi soldiers were high on meth during invasions. And I said, I wonder what drugs our politicians might be on. They've they got to be on drugs, prescription and non-prescription. 50% of America's on something or other, right? So that means that a good percentage of these people are drug addicts. Nazi soldiers were high on meth-like drug new book claims. Erwin uh, Rommel, 
It's no secret that Adolf Hitler relied heavily on drugs. But we know that the soldiers themselves relied on pharmacological helpers. Pervitin contained a form of methamphetamine similar to today's crystal meth. Invented in 1937, used in a German energy drink, intended to rival Coca-Cola before the war. <laughs> they get a two out of that. They attack energy drinks. <laughs> Uh, the Germans use this stuff. Interest to soldiers. Keeps you awake for a long time. Played a major role in the success of the Blitzkrieg that destroyed France in a matter of weeks. I wonder what drugs some of our politicians might be on. In fact, the drug was so successful that British and American soldiers began using amphetamines later in the war to keep up. That's an interesting fact unto itself. It's an argument for it, I guess, if you're at war. But that's neither here nor there. The question is, how could Obama get away with what he gets away with unless most in the media are drugged out of their minds and don't even listen to him? I, I can't believe that he'd come out and attack the Republicans before the debate and not even understand that he was criticizing himself by what he was saying. Could you imagine what it would be like to wake up when Trump, if Trump wins? Let's say he wins. Can you imagine what you would feel the next morning? After 2016, let's look look ahead for a minute. Let's just go ahead together. I remember I have a famous picture of myself on a boat I rented for a party in 2008 when the imposter was foisted upon us, and it's of me sitting dejectedly on a on a couch in the lower part of the ship with my dog Teddy, and my shoulders are slumped. I'm leaning forward in a black raincoat, a black hat, and the title of the picture is "The Night." We lost America. That was in 2008 when the imposter was foisted upon us by the foreign powers that are now eating us alive. That's a full paragraph. The night that America lost when this imposter was foisted upon us by foreign, actually I should say foreign and domestic powers. I mean, if you look at what Silicon Valley is trying to do to this country for cheap labor, it's frightening. When you look at what Microsoft is doing, to make sure that the floodgates remain open so that out of the millions of illegal aliens, they can cull out a few thousand cheap laborers in their IT departments. See what I'm saying? A guy like this, Zuckerberg, understands one thing, the bottom line only. He doesn't look at what it's doing to the country. He doesn't look at the lives he's devastating amongst domestic IT workers. He could care less firing a guy making 70 or 80 an hour to replace him with someone making 35 an hour. All he knows is... There's more undershirts for him. That's how he ends it up. It's like a squirrel with chest with the little acorns. He's that. You think these people are that much smarter than you? Some of them are smart, but they're not as visionary as you may think. Some of them are very lucky. Some of them are very lucky, and they have no vision whatsoever. And that's what governments are for, which is to rein in people like this who put profit before the nation. That's right. You hear what I just said? People who just put profit before everything else are the destructive force that we've got to worry about. And that includes politicians, by the way. People who put party above nation, like the Democrat, socialist, Islamist machine that refuses to permit Hillary Clinton to debate other Democrats. If that doesn't indicate to you she's got a lot to hide, I don't know what will. And we're all waiting for the debate to begin. And you'll hear others talk about it, as they should. And then tonight the debate will be the actual, you know, fight. Some of us will watch. I, I think I'll watch this one. I couldn't watch it last time. After, after Martha Washington asked that loaded question of Donald Trump, I turned it off. I was on to her a long time ago. I saw through her good looks. She's a good-looking lady. I'm not going to knock it. I'm going to say no, you know. But you know and I know how vicious she is. I don't like vicious. Intelligence, yes. Cutting, yes. Insightful, yes. Sarcastic, yes. Vicious, no. And the giveaway from Martha Washington, you know her as Megyn Kelly. I know her actual name. The giveaway for it was right, listen to me carefully, you've not heard this before except for me. Right after the Republican debate last time, who did Megyn Kelly interview to show you the fixes in with Roger Ailes? Who did she talk to? Who out there knows who she interviewed immediately after the debates? None other then Hillary Clinton's gatekeeper, Debbie Wasserwoman Schultz. And she sat there like a, like a, like a, a schoolgirl. 
asking Debbie Wasserwoman Schultz everything under the sun about what she thought about the debate. 